Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the fifth video in our series of videos covering the 10 most common behavioral issues associated with dogs. My name is Corey and I am the training program coordinator at A Walk in the Park. Um, this video, our fifth video, covers begging. Um, this one is kind of a fun one if, you, if you're a trainer because if your dog is begging, uh, guess what? It's your fault. <laughs> you may have heard me say that before on some of our other videos. Um, a lot of times because when our dogs develop problem behaviors, it's typically related to the way we respond to our dogs when they're offering those behaviors. Our response to those behaviors um, determines whether those behaviors are going to continue in the future or whether your dog is not going to continue to perform them because it didn't earn them anything favorable. Okay, so if you don't want your dog to be doing something, the best thing to do is ignore it and reward the behaviors you want your dog to see. Now, it is not always possible to completely ignore problem behaviors, especially if you're in a situation where your dog could do harm to someone uh, or themselves. However, begging, this is an easy one, guys. Just don't do it. Don't start that process that encourages your dog to beg, okay? Your dog is begging because it works for them and you are weak. <laughs> Cut and dry, okay? You are the weakling. Now, in my household, I am not weak. <laughs> I do not feed my dogs off of my plate. I do not respond to them when they are begging. It is not a behavior I want to see, so I do not reinforce it and I do not encourage it. Now, there are others in my household that would be identified as a weak link. And uh, my toddler is one of them. She's 18 months old. She wanders around the house with a snack in her hand quite often. Uh, our dog is a German Shepherd Boxer mix, and she's fairly large. She's about 80 pounds, and um, she's right at face height with the baby. So, you know, they're best friends because the baby thinks it's fun to feed the dog, and the dog thinks it's fun to steal the baby snacks. So um, the dog knows she can get food from the baby very easily. So at dinner time, my dog is not at my side, even though she typically is throughout the day. If we're out playing in the backyard, she's right by my side. If I'm sitting on the couch, she's right under my feet, um, you know, at uh, the floor of the couch. Um, but at dinner time, she's next to the baby's high chair because she knows that the, the there's a, a really good chance that food is going to come from that space. Um, so if your dog is begging, it's because you've encouraged it, unfortunately. Um, I can say, you know, with some of our other behaviors that we've talked about, we've talked about digging, we've talked about chewing, we've talked about um, accidents and, and barking. Those are not necessarily a result um, of 100%, you know, what's going on with you and how you're responding. Sometimes there are things in the environment that are encouraging those behaviors to happen. But I can say with certainty, begging is 100% a result of you responding to your dog when they do the behavior. Okay, so let's break this down. <clears throat> you sit down to eat, your dog wants what you have. <clears throat> they come over, they sit down next to you, they stare lovingly at you with those puppy eyes that are just so sad and makes you feel terrible that they don't have, you know, a piece of that filet mignon on your plate. So because you are weak, <laughs> you give in and you share. Well, guess what? Rinse and repeat that a few times and boom, your dog has you wrapped around his or her little pinky paw. <laughs> Sorry, but um, your dog knows that begging is going to get him what he wants. Just very simply, your dog has learned, you have taught your dog that when those sad eyes come out, something delicious is going to follow. So what are you gonna do and what are you not going to do? Well. If you have the opportunity, if your dog is still very young, a puppy, don't start it in the first place. Know that, you know, starting, even just giving your dog a taste here and there, maybe you toss something to them during your mealtime prep, that's going to encourage, you, encourage them to be right under your feet when you're making dinner. Now, it might be cute when your puppy is small, uh, but when your dog gets big and gets kind of pushy, it can then become frustrating. So thinking down the road, if this is not a behavior you want to see long-term, don't start it in the first place. Don't even give your dog that first bite off of your plate. Um, 
Now, if this is a problem that's already established because you have been weak in the past and you want to modify this behavior, I would encourage you to look into mat work or station training. There's a few different names for it. Um, boundaries is another name for it. You may find um, if you were to Google search it. Uh, you're also welcome to contact us. Um, we have lots of tips and tricks for uh, mat work and station training and how they apply to various situations, whether we're trying to teach an overexcited dog to be calm or we're trying to teach an anxious dog uh, to become less anxious or we simply want our dogs to understand that when we ask them to go to this place they need to stay there until we tell them it's okay to get out of that place for whatever reason we need them confined to that space okay so mat work boundary games station training these are all names for the same kind of concept um, you can ask them to place themselves there during your mealtime prep and uh, when you're eating your dinner to uh, encourage them to not be next to you and begging, especially if it's going to tempt you into dropping a morsel onto the floor. Um, be sure to reward your dog for not begging when you're completely done eating and with an appropriate dog item, so a treat or a piece of their kibble or something, um, not something directly off your plate. Even if you're done eating and it, you're not going to finish what's there, that can still send them mixed messages and, and be a little bit confusing. So make sure it's something that is um, designed for your dog and not something that, that you're eating. Um, you know, just to throw in here while we're talking about it, feeding your dog off of your plate is really not a healthy uh, choice. Now, I do home cook for my dog. Um, she gets home cooked meals as well as kibble. But when I cook for my dog, I don't use any additional seasonings. Um, garlic and onions can be toxic. Uh, salt can be dangerous. So I don't use any kind of seasonings or things like that in my dog's food when I cook for her. But when we cook for ourselves, we do tend to load up our food with those seasonings to, to flavor it. So if we're sharing those items with our dog, we could be potentially providing them with something that is um, unsafe and unhealthy for them. So give that some consideration too before you offer your dog food off of your plate. Even if you don't care if your dog begs or you know, you're happy to share your food or whatever else, uh, give their health a consideration there. Um, and maybe if you want to share your meal times with your dog, you know, have some food there that's healthy and safe for them. Okay, just a, another thought. Um, if you are dealing with begging, be strong. Ignore that begging. Ultimately, your dog will learn that it no longer works for him and he'll give it up. This may take a little bit of time. And something you do want to watch for is a little thing we trainers called an extinction burst. This is happening when you are on the right track. Okay, I always encourage my clients to watch for this little phenomenon in dog behavior. Um, a lot of times I've had clients report and say, you know, you know, we've, we've been working on this and it seemed like it was getting better. And then all of a sudden it got really bad again. And I throw my hands up and I say, fantastic. That is great news. Good work. And they're very confused by that. Um, and that's because you're on the right track. You're not done yet, but you are on the right track. What's happening here during an extinction burst? When we are trying to eliminate a behavior uh, from your dog's repertoire, um, you know, this particular behavior may have worked for them in the past. So begging has always gotten them what they wanted. And now we've decided we don't want to continue with this behavior, so we're going to stop it. We're going to try to eliminate it. So maybe for a little while, your dog's kind of paying attention to the new pattern. Um, maybe they kind of start to beg a little less because it's like, oh man, this isn't getting me anywhere anymore. But maybe about a weekend, your dog is like, you know what? I'm going to give this one last good effort. You know, this really used to work for me uh, before. So I'm going to try to make it work again. And guess what? My begging tenfold. I'm right there. I'm right in your face. I don't care about that stupid mat. I want that food and I want it now. So here I am. You can't ignore me because I am being very persistent and I'm right in your face. This is what an extinction burst is. It seems like, you know, there's a decline in that behavior and then it pops up again, maybe for a week, maybe for 10 days, hopefully not for two weeks, but possibly, you know, it spikes. And then what happens after that spike, what happens after that extinction burst is that we see that behavior drop off again. So when I get excited, when my clients tell me that all of a sudden their dog is doing horrible again, 
it's a little confusing at first until I explain that this is exactly what they should see. Not all dogs will go through an extinction burst, but um, you know, it's it's a it's a pretty likely thing that, that that could happen when you're trying to eliminate a behavior that has previously gotten them something favorable in the past. So be prepared for that that extinction burst. One last thing to remember is that bad behaviors are never gone; they're just dormant. So the instant that you um, you know decide to get lax, maybe go ahead and and let them have something, you know, just once a week or something like that. Guess what? That begging behavior is absolutely going to come back. Um, consistency is key. And I said it before in some of our previous videos. I'm going to say it again. Um, a lot of these points I'm going to continue to say because they apply in just about any training situation. Consistency is key. Ignoring those behaviors you don't want to see is important. Okay. So if you have questions about, um, in particular, begging behaviors, uh, though this is a pretty easy one. If you want to eliminate it, just follow the steps I've outlined. But again, those questions can be directed to our facility, a walk in the park at 419-475-4101. You can also reach me directly at 419-930-6229 or by email at training at awitp.net. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.